Good evening and uh, welcome to the Port Moody Art Center. I'm pleased that you're joining us for our next artist talk by Valerie Pugh. And I'm not going to get into a whole bunch of talking about other things. I'm just going to quickly invite Valerie to come in and tell you all about her amazing work. I'm really looking forward to this. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, thank you for joining us at the Port Moody Art Gallery. Thank you to Janice for all the effort in setting up the work and to the gallery for setting this presentation in place. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge that we are on the unceded traditional territory of the Kwikwetlem First Nation within the shared territories of the Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam, Kakite, Squamish, and Stolo nations. So thank you for this land, this place, and this time. Tonight, I want to introduce my work and some of the inspirations and ideas that I was thinking about in producing it. If you look behind me, you will probably see what you are seeing now, which are fragments of self. The idea that through that screen you're getting these amorphous blobs with the eyeballs looking and you're seeing parts, parts of um, identity, parts of who we are. And um, because COVID has kept us in quarantine, we're seeing ourselves fragmented in parts, kind of separated into compartments of online sharing. But when I started this process, what I was really inspired by is that the ideas about reflection, about what we see and what we consume through seeing have a real effect on how we interpret what we see and really how we judge what we see. When I began, I was noticing how often we um, see something that interests us, but not looking at what we see. When we photograph it, we end up seeing the reflection in a window that in the iPad, iPad, iPad window is just you know, pick your device. Are you seeing the world through your phone or your iPad or a monitor? Or in this image, are you just seeing the reflection of all of those devices and that you are observing them? I uh, extended that when I looked at by the pool. Uh, my husband and I were looking into a gallery window and at a, a large photograph of the pool and then it occurred to me that we had traveled as young people and that as young people we had a reflection of ourselves and as as a memory but as older people yeah, there i am documenting the event the piece beside it archival human was uh really the when um, my students and I went to the Beatty Museum um, at, uh, um, at UBC. Um, all kinds of cases of artifacts, of uh, animals, of birds, of shells, documenting the biomorphic world. And that my students really were interested in that. And they were recording that. And, uh, the shock to me when I looked back and realized we are artifacts. We are part of that case. We are both observing and um, capturing and storing and looking at um, the world that once was and maybe hopefully still is. So it really changes the interpretation 
when you look at the photograph or the document that you for, um, save um, about a piece. If we could just move over to the um, extreme of that, that we are in a situation where we have an internal image of what we look like. And yet, when people are looking at us, what they see is the phone in front of the face. And that often, the conversation that we're having with someone is only part of the conversation that they are having with other people on their devices. And the, further, that idea of what they're saying on their devices in that conversation is quite different than how they think they're being viewed externally. So that was a, a message to self. Uh, beside that is a piece that really, if you can see it in the gallery, it took the whole concept of looking and that there's a push and pull, that we're really wanting to upload whatever app catches our eye and our attention. But we are also being caught. We're being monitored. We're becoming part of a, a background algorithm that starts to use that information to understand our identity and perhaps use it to their own uh, financial or otherwise benefits. Uh, Janice did an amazing job of setting this up. The surveillance camera with the circling eyes and then the eyes all the way around. And the tough part about this piece is we're always just making a decision. Are we going to push agree and figure that, ah, what could go wrong? Or are we really going to stand back a bit and think about our choices? Push agree, right? <laughs> um, the piece beside this is one that um, was a real event when I was in Palm Springs, and I wanted to see the giant Marilyn. And we went there, and there, Marilyn was on the move. And the I saw Marilyn was that she was um, dismembered. <laughs> she was taken apart to be cleaned and restored. There were a few people watching. And what I noticed is that all the generations that were observing were doing it with their devices through their photograph documents, except an elderly couple who were actually there, present, looking at the experience. And then it struck me that perhaps they too were using their memory and that thinking they actually were um, seeing Marilyn as a live, living person as part of their history, and that the filter that they were using was their lives. And I thought that was a really poignant moment. And then Marilyn moved along. Um, the piece next to it is really uh, bookending the piece on the other wall about fragmentation, uh, bringing again that, that idea of um, who are we? Who decides how we um, look, what our image is? And if you have, any of you have ever Googled yourself, you'll just see bits and pieces. But behind those bits and pieces of our broken image is the idea that there's someone watching, that it could be the uh, malevolent or benevolent um, indicator. A few people who have come to the exhibition have sent me images of themselves in relation to that and the, the way that they see themselves again mirrors how we are seeing ourselves in our fragmented 
um, world of online viewing. So when you come to the exhibition, please take that image, send it to Port Moody Art Center. I would love to have what a collection of documentation. The piece that we're going to look at next was the beginning. Um, and the, when I say it was the beginning, it's that when I was in Hong Kong, walking down the busy street, I saw these beautiful Wei Dynasty horses and, and out of ceramics and really wanted a picture of them. Uh, of course, when I later looked at the picture, I realized quite a different content meaning. And that was that here, Hong Kong had this ancient history and in the middle of this bustling, busy business environment, and that I was documenting. And it really, it, it really gave me the understanding that the reflection that we see is not what we think we see. That really, it is a combination of the devices we use to see it with what we project the image to be and then what is actually shown. So it came out quite a bit different. I also realized then this piece, Barriers to Entry. Well, we feel living in these kind of glass buildings and, and atmospheres that we are very free to see. But in fact, there's real barriers to actually being in the space. We have the glass walls, and I'm sure for those of you who are working and you bump into your plexiglass wall that um, divides us all now, that you can appreciate that the barriers to seeing refract and fragment much in the way that online images do the same. And so looking at something and seeing something and being there and fragmenting that are all part of how we are learning to consume in a different way what we see. And so the, uh, um, the piece on the back wall I have been working on for probably three years. And I started working on it much before everyone got the mask and had only eyes. And the, the thing that I realized in starting this piece is that each of us is unique and individual. And when you see that neutral gaze of all of us with our curiosity and our diversity looking out into the world, we get a sense of the richness and diversity that when all put together and moving, what happens is that there's a communication, there's a touching, there's an interaction. And that the whole piece, hanging as it is, starts to feel like one huge community. Which of course, now that we're all online, we realize our community is so big. Our community is of human beings and the human gaze that connects us with each other. So it, it's, it's quite kind of compelling that after it slows down, it's almost like that this piece is breathing as one movement together. It's kind of interesting to me. Um, the last set of pieces is really about all that searching, all that looking, all that availability. So digital assistants sitting on the table um, with the eye candy is that we can ask the question, so when was that movie made? Or whatever is of our interest. But at the same time, it's monitoring, it's seeing us. So while we're seeing something that gives us information and quick access, 
how much is being seen of our lives? And would we actively give permission for that to be seen? And then finally, that came together with the idea that there is a possibility that there's a greater awareness of each other in the gift. And that the idea of being seen and of seeing in this wide and deep way is the Buddha gift of greater consciousness, of greater awareness that we are part of something larger. So I guess for me, ideas about reflection, ideas about interpretation about what we see, ideas about what it means to really engage in conversation, in communication, are changing so rapidly. And that I want to really bridge the gap between um, the individual touch and connection through the device to really feel like we are still one human gaze. And that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you again to the gallery and Caitlin to you for recording this. I think I have to leave. No, no, no. <laughs> we might have some questions. To, uh, ask some questions. Oh, okay. Um, so some of them now, um, Caitlin always has questions to ask when we're doing these things. But um, something I wanted to talk about was uh, when you went back to the beginning because you've got the image from Hong Kong and I think I've related that story to quite a few people who have been into the gallery because it, it was quite, uh, I found it very interesting that it spurred this whole concept. Now I didn't hear all of what you said when you were there, but how, how did it go from being the reflection in the window to something like eye catcher. Yeah. Definitely it begins somewhere. And that beginning is what I thought I was looking at, what I was interested in, and then the ref re the reflective surface of the glass and the photograph showing me such a different content, such a different meaning. And I had to then think, well, yes, what we think we see is like wearing glasses that will only allow us to see a certain thing, not to see in that open way of acknowledgement and the, the phone, the device, the quickness which we can photograph actually shows us sometimes much, much more than we ever thought that we were looking at. So um, I guess what I'm curious about is how, I mean, this started the concept for the exhibition, Hong Kong, and I believe that Eye Catcher is the most recent piece. So that was the first one. Eye Catcher is the last one created for the exhibition. And there's a big gap between mm -hmm. the way you've represented them. Yeah. Um, could you speak to how this transition went from a reflection to the various um, transitions through the exhibition. Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, when I began, I was really interested in surface, in the paint. I was using, um, uh, you know, that sort of subtlety of brush work, and that um, that. Uh, idea of translating into paint um, and really redefining um, what was a reflection or what was real, what was inside a window, what was outside. So I was thinking of painterly concerns and painted 
those as two-dimensional surfaces. Once I began looking at the concepts about fragmentation, about uh, the difference between who's looking and who's watching, um, I really felt I needed to change the method to abstraction instead of realism. I needed to change from the idea of a whole single image to the diorama that shows physical fragmentation. So it was a physical response. And then when I completed the, the uh, final piece, Eye Catcher, I, it, was, it was kind of uh, like um, a metaphor or a play on words or just an idea about, yeah, well, yes, I know that the screens are going to catch my eye. What catches uh, eyes? Fly catchers catch flies. Eye catchers catch eyes, and then that playful look was really that uh, uh, that I had to create a sculpture that replicated on, um, as a metaphor for something else that was a catcher. And I hope that that answers your question. That's perfect. Now I have a question from Janet Wang, and um, Janet says, "Could you speak to your materials choices?" I'm very interested in the contrast between the subject, and then in brackets, the digital divide and virtual surveillance versus the material, real, analog, process-driven. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Janet. Do you want to, would it help to see it? Or? No. No? Okay. Um, I, I, under, I understand the uh, idea. What she was asking. Uh, yeah. uh, that, um, that really is... Um, an artist's question because if you're working with, if I'm working with an idea, um, my choice of material, my choice of how it's presented um, has to follow and work with the concept. And so that if you came into this show, you would say, well, these are all by one artist. Um, and that would be a question just because of the diversity of methods. When I began, the idea of the, the media, um, egg tempera, and, um, and the fragility of the canvas, and that the media was like a moment in time that was constructed and dissolved in paint, and um, that it would eventually, as a as a, a real artifact um, dissolve over time. Um, when I decided to do the 40 sets of eyes, it was always intended as a piece that would hang and have an interactive quality. Because being looked at and being stared at and giving yourself permission to be seen and permission to see means that you have to create um, a really a, an environment of seeing. I had initially planned that piece to be a six foot circle in which you could walk and make new eyes for yourself. But uh, again, this idea of, of looking in, had to be done for me as um, the thing that we look at. When I worked with this image and started the idea of fragmentation, it was really the very next idea that came is that everything had to be broken and it had to be real. It had to be broken fragments that I could see as broken. And so I immediately was attracted to the sculptural component of that. I like that there's 40 sets of eyes, that there's a thousand eyes watching in fly slaughter, that there's 40 sets of eyes, maybe some are missing, um, it, it, that are, are surveilling as eye candy. I like the multiples.
because we we often sense that um, when we're communicating, we're communicating with another person or maybe a group of people. But now we are communicating with everyone who has access to that vision or that information. And so that the, the media, the material quality has an effect. I even find I can use my own sculpture, that holding on and knowing that as an object, as something that is looking, is a, a kind of a device that does make us aware of looking and seeing and being watched. I hope, Janet, that I answered your question somewhat. Um, now I have it's it's more of a comment, but you might find it something to respond to. Um, J. Any, uh, I'm not sure if it's anyone. It, Go Bolt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, Jenny, Jen. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's it's almost done as two words. My apologies um, if I misinterpreted the name. It says um, interesting link to Buddhism. I was thinking of the idea of the observing self and the compassionate witness throughout tonight and how the multitude of fractions, filters, and layers might move us closer or farther away from both. Oh, what a thought. That's brilliant. I, I, I'm picking up on a few of the words there. The idea of layers, layers of information, layers of seeing, and connecting that to that second idea of um, that, that the layers are, if I use the Buddhist idea, the bath which passes. And that at any moment, uh, one of those layers or one of those fragments kind of sticks in the brain. But it's an ever-moving consciousness. Thank you for those thoughts, because you're right. All of that movement, all of those bits, if we stop, we could actually get stuck in them. And some of us in quarantine feel a little bit stuck at times because we're not letting the layers, letting the movements and events really transform um, moment to moment into a greater understanding that they are all just moments, but a greater understanding. Oh, learn something in your own exhibition. Thank you. There's actually some wonderful comments in here, so you should have a look through at the end of the night to uh, respond back to your followers. Oh, my goodness, I, I certainly will. And thank you to all of you who joined me tonight and uh, took a look online at the work. and to all of you who actually have come or plan to come and see the work for yourself. A final note, if your eyes are on that wall and I know who you are and can find you, I am sending your eyes back to you. So again, thank you Caitlin for recording. Thank you so much Janice and thank you to Fort Whitty Art Center. Okay, I'm done and now I have to move aside six feet away from everyone.